here is immediately followed by sarcastic comments and nasty responses. Yep, we're finally where we belong. <laughs> <laughs> don't think we don't know how to weed them out. Put a chicken in, make her gay. Put a chicken in, make her name it gay. All of Andrew's scenes could get cut. Who knows? It's Hollywood, baby. But <laughs> That's all, brother. I had it. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, too. <laughs> Very good. Well, we can't get out of it. Get into it. Welcome to Inside the Badger Den with the Angry Badger and Mr. Tech Rat. I'm always the only one clapping. I'm always the only one clapping. Get a clap into the mic. I'm clapping. I'm clapping. I'm clapping. I'm clapping. Clapping on the inside. Something like that. I was Welcome. smiling. Welcome. We, we can't tell. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Inside the Badger Den, the ninth episode. The ninth of the penultimate. Not that it's ending at the tenth. It's just people rarely get there. I am, of course, Angry Badger, mostly just ill-tempered. Badger for short. Mr. Tech Rat, my co-host. Welcome. How's it going? I he's a bit he's a bit down. He's like I think he's stretching himself too thin today, the Badger. So uh, we'll see. I might be the more talkative one today. We would thank you not to comment about the Badger's performance before it has uh, it's been given because now hey. you're setting a tone that I may or may not follow. I'm just saying, you know, this could turn into the Rat Cast. Yeah, no, 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 no. If there's anyone, I am the taker over of shows. Thank you. Don't ignite my. Don't make me like Mike Tyson. Don't don't ignite my ego. If you get if you make me get competitive, I'll kiss you. I'll kiss you or kill you. I don't know. That's getting clipped. Sometimes both. Uh, now kiss. No, we <laughs> we did have a, a big week. We had a big week. If you weren't paying attention. I of course did Nerd Wars birthday stream. And uh, the gods decreed that his movie review was so fucking horrible that I, I should take over. And so they made his power go out. But we will get to that. We can't talk about that yet. Can't talk about it. We have to go in order of the videos we did. And the first video we did on a Saturday was the Dune 2 extended sneak peek, which is actually pretty good. And I am looking forward to Dune. And apparently, based on early reactions, it is good. Yeah, he fights a graboid. Yeah, God, you fucking. Not everything can be Tremors related, even if we want it to be. And technically, didn't Dune come out before Tremors? Of course it did. Yeah, let's check it out. Let's see the Graboid. See it in IMAX. Ugh. He's got worms. I'm gonna have me some fun. I'm gonna have me some fun. I'm gonna have me some fun. It's Starship Troopers. Oh, Mac from uh. Oh yeah, he could be a little Starship. Uh, when he jumps on the bug. I got it. Do a full on. Doom Raider. Hold X. Yeah. See? Err, oh, no. No. Yeah, and then I we were like, how the hell is he moving, maneuvering that with just the little picks on that? But apparently, thanks to the lovely chat that informed us, apparently they're very sensitive in those flaps. And if they're moved back and exposed, ah, yeah, little princess in the pea way. type of thing. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. I am. I am. And thankfully, like we've said, we've heard it is going to be decent. Which is not something we're hearing for many other things, but something we are also hearing would be decent, despite the reactions from some people. Is this Aegon's Conquest prequel set in the Game of Thrones universe? Sorry Gun. to anybody that was offended by my mis uh, misclipping 
in that yeah, short. Dude, yeah. For context, there might have been some people that when we were talking about this story thought we were talking about Aegon from House of the Dragon. Aegon's a very popular name, as you're going to find. This is the original Aegon, of which everyone is renamed, or named after, rather, but you see, Aegon's Conquest is one of the many planned Game of Thrones spinoffs currently in the works because House of the Dragon was successful. And uh, this would focus on the original Targaryen going to Westeros and taking over based on a vision that he had that, uh, you know, zombies are going to take over, basically. But, uh, yeah, I I think what – because here's the thing. The articles were describing it as a bloody conquest, even if it maybe wasn't that bloody in the actual fact. So – click played or not that's that's what was going on there and that's what we're getting and again i like house of the dragon so if we're getting this based by them i'm here for it you have you still have not watched house of the dragon you don't give a shit about any game of thrones stuff right i i didn't finish game of thrones itself because of all the backlash and i know i shouldn't let that you know dictate what i'm doing but yeah but in that case that's an all right choice thankfully house of the dragon is set hundreds and hundreds of years before yeah. that and this would be set hundreds and hundreds of years before that so possibly even better yeah yeah i'll and check it is, out this is going back to april of 2023 so it, it's been a while for them telling the story but uh I, that's a story i want that's a story i want but we're it's about weird. to get a story you keep saying about. positive things. Oh, I like Dune. Yes, I'm, I'm excited it. for this. I'm, I'm saving it because we're also getting this. You got a little shit sandwich going on. We're getting this. We're getting this by Harvey Weinstein personal assistant, Leslie Headland. Gorgeous woman. Yeah, she's. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to reserve judgment on that because, in my opinion, in my opinion, she's not a good woman. No, 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 no. I didn't say uh, she was a good woman. Anyway. No, no, no. She does not look good. She no, she ugly. She ugly face. She ugly inside. So we're the doing another thing. thing that takes place a long time before something that took place a long time ago. But not really, because it's only 50 years before The Phantom Menace. But the main thing is this is set to release in summer. So right in time for the for the uh, Badger's birthday, we'll get The Acolyte, which is probably going to ruin a lot of people I like, including Carrie Ann Moss, who we love as Trinity, and oh, yeah. Daphne, uh, the, you know, the little, the little girl from uh, Logan who's not a little girl, and she's actually like probably like 23 at this point. She was, she was in his dark materials. That's a good uh, book series. You know, like the yeah. Golden Compass movie, I heard you but say they did that it the again. Other day. Yeah. Well, guess what? I highly recommend it, even though I didn't read the book. So it's probably horrible compared to the books. But Do I did digress? enjoy it for what it was. No, because I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> kill you with your little drinking game. Apparently, I say you've given me a phobia because now I actively try not. To I say hear you it. when you say it. I hate you so uh... much. Uh, yeah, and this was the other thing is they're going to connect the High Republic to a book character no one gives a shit because after they got rid of their actual popular expanded universe, tried to replace it with their High Republic universe, which is just, it sucks. No one reads it. I, I think one, one person came into the comments and raised their hand and was like, me, I'm that person, I guess. You know, let me, yeah, you know, this one. You know, this this chick, uh, I'm trying to see if there's a better picture, but it's fine. This is enough. This is the one that was like, yes, queen. Yes. She's 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 a powerful leader. You know that no. one? Do you know who she was married to? No. Fucking Pacey. Wow. Joshua Jackson was married to this bitch. Jody Turner Smith. Yes. I hmm. swear. Divorced now. It's gotta be a story. Divorced now. Yeah. But I just think it's funny that all these like patriarchy, bad racism, they all marry white men, by the way, you know, like, uh, well, it's a political thing, so I won't get it. But there's a policy, a certain AOC, uh -huh, white men married to a white man. But yeah, here we go. Carrie Ann Moss and uh, Daphne Keene. They're going to be joining. She's going to be playing a Jedi, a Jedi who doesn't use a lightsaber. Carrie Ann Moss. She's going to use martial arts. You think they did that because she was in the Matrix? Maybe. And she's got a lot of training and doesn't matter that she's older. They'll just have her stand around a lot. Looking speaking stoic. Of, speaking of training and who I hope they don't have standing around. And I actually, something I would like aside from someone who's associated with it. Batman, the Cape Crusader. Now, remember all that cope when in, uh, Kevin Conroy's Batman in, in uh, Suicide Squad was brutally murdered. And then they're like, ah, oh, you're going to hear him again. He's going to be in the Cape Crusader. They're like, no, he's not. He's not going to be a Cape Crusader. We wanted him to, but he's not. Well, this is that Cape Crusader. Bruce Tim. Remember yep. Bruce Tim? And they said he had nothing to do with it. 
Yeah, well, Bruce Tim said that, but Bruce Tim does have something to do with this, thankfully. And since he was the original creator of uh, the animated series, I mean, long short of it is they're teasing that this is what Bruce Tim wanted to do in the 90s. So this would have been the show we would have gotten had he had no constraints, restraints, any of the strains. Right. So it should be just as good, if not better. Should be, except for J.J. Abrams. J.J. Yeah. Abrams is a part of it. Got his thumb in it again, huh? The man is a demon sent from one of the realities. I'm not sure which one. I haven't pegged it down yet. But he's definitely from a reality that I don't want a part of it. Liz, it's very much a reconception of starting over. It's not PG-13, but it's definitely, it's a lot different. Sort of like the show Bruce Tim always wanted to make, but they wouldn't let him make it. Keep in mind that this is the show that HBO Max at the time, now branded Max, canceled and said no. And it was picked up by Jennifer Salky and Amazon. So I wonder what Max said no to that Amazon was like, oh, we'll take it. You know, I'm picking up some salty tones when you say certain names tonight. Jennifer Salky? Uh-huh. Could it be that that's the dumb bitch that turned down a Conan show only for the showrunners to go over and make House of the Dragon? Could it be? She's feeling sheepish. Could it be? Could she be the one that's behind Rings of Power and uh, the the Wheel of Time and all those horrible decisions? Hmm. Possible. It's possible. I don't know how she let Reacher and uh, uh, Terminalist slip through. Same thing. Are they doing a season two? I'm sorry? Sorry, are they doing a season two of Terminal? Oh, I thought you say of Reacher. Was like, uh, of Terminal? Yes, they are doing a season two. And they're doing a spinoff with Taylor Kitsch. And uh, just because I mentioned it, Reacher is, of course, not only getting a season three, it's currently filming because they fucking figured out you can't make people wait a year and a half in between yeah. seasons. No, uh, I love Reacher. And we're getting that. By the way, we are getting season two of House of the Dragon because they shot right through the Hollywood strike because they weren't a Hollywood crew. They were over there in London, Whammy. England, whatever the hell it was. Uh, it's all the Europeans. No, you just offended just someone. I'm just kidding. Ten percent of the audience. So I'm kidding, guys. Good thing they have good humor. I have a Brit humor card because of all the Brits, upward, downward, and Roger Ryan, Athey. You guys will. You guys make it a okay. Uh, long and short of this is, like all things, I'm hopeful for it, and like all things, they'll probably fuck this up, woke it up, destroy it, because we can't have heroes and legacy characters anymore. And even our heroes, like Bruce Tim, we find out it's been two decades since we've heard from him. He's probably been corrupted, which is why, as a white man, he's still getting work, because he <laughs> onto the other team. Prove wow. me wrong, Timmy. Prove me wrong. In this episode, in this rendition of Batman, he has a daughter, and she helps save everything. Uh, uh, the girl that's the key to everything. Um, speaking of people that think is going to save everything, is not the key to everything, but certainly they think he'll save everything. I By the way, we are going to watch this. 50. We might mystery science it a little bit. We'll try not to talk over it too much, but we are going to watch it. That being said, pay attention to the beginning. Vanessa and him are broken up because why would they be happy? She calls him buddy. That hurts They're you more now. than the TVA stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah the TVA. Yeah, because it was the whole cancer build up gonna cancer. From the first. Yeah. 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 So now yet again, you've stripped away and I get it. I get it because he's going to destroy it all. He can't be connected. But still, it's just yet another character that you couldn't let be happy even for a little bit. That's happy right. birthday to you. <laughs> Okay. All right, okay. Um, it's been a challenging few years, for sure, but I'm happy. That is because of each and every one of you. I'm the luckiest man alive. <laughs> Make a wish, buddy. Okay. Uh, I wish the girl I went back in time to save didn't call me buddy and still loved me. That could be a stretch, dude. That, that you, you might You might be reaching. She could just be... The, that could just be a term of endearment across the board. I, I don't think it necessarily means they're not oh, together. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, it's been a challenging few. Her looking at him sad and disappointed with his face in his hands. Mm. By the way, I guarantee you he said, I still love you before this. Not saying that happened to me in a real life situation, oh, so maybe it's triggering. But okay, Fears? let's go to the next one. Him sitting there next to her, awkwardly looking at her. For sure. Her she walking walks away, away, him with Sarah. Right. Saying, you want me to, you want, you want to be happy? Tones? I don't have any more goodwill, tech rat. 
That is because of each and every one of you. Yeah. I'm the luckiest yeah. man alive. <laughs> Make a wish, buddy. Make a wish, buddy. They have a they have a, a, a interesting buddy relationship. Uh, I see what you did. Don't be incentive. Wait, Wilson? Who's asking? How come they didn't send that one black chick? Whoa, 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 Body positivity? Whoa, whoa. Is that supposed to be scary? Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. See? Yeah, that's a solid joke. Solid joke. <sighs> Miss Wilson, you appear to have soiled This dude has uh, John Wick 2 vibes. Who are you? And yeah, that's good. All the humor's Why fine. here? Yeah. Walk with me. Yeah. The ultimate, because then we'll just watch it. Uh, no one gives a shit who the TVA is. It will confuse people. It will also probably be explained in like 30 seconds and be just fine because it's a shallow concept. Wait. You are special. This is your chance to be a hero among heroes. I smell what you're stepping in, Sensei. Your little cinematic universe is about to change forever. <laughs> I'm the Messiah. I am Marvel Jesus. Yes, the ass slap is great. For me, it's this one right here. And it is the Fox logo. Yeah, please. Oh my God. God, I love this part. Wait. Don't just stand there. Hate that. Give me a hand up. It's Ryan's channel, so he won't no, claim us. I guess we can. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is not going to save anything. Not save, but at we'll least keep a afloat. Yeah, that's all that will do for for but a moment. They'll say, I mean, they'll get a billion dollars out of it if it's at least halfway decent. I figure we'll get some good cameos that are like actual moments and then a short load of just throwaway cameos like rapid fire yeah. i i think they're going to do a variation of dead bill a dead pool kills the marvel universe uh pruning if you will and then hopefully destroys the tva and removes that shit so we don't have to ever think about that again um I didn't even do loki season two no i didn't either i did not either Something I do want to do. We talked about this a little bit. First yeah. comic I ever actually owned. Uh, my grandmother, may she rest in the souls of heaven, or whatever the fuck we call it. Uh, she bought this from Toys R Us at the time when they sold comics. But it was DC versus Marvel issue three. And now, and I never finished it. And I, I could finally get them in omnibus form. I'm trying to see if they'd have actually. But yeah. So back in the day, they had a bunch of Marvel DC crossovers and one specifically called the amalgam universe was they had it like uh the universes were going to collide so they had to fight to see who was more worthy and all your favorites fought mortal combat style and it was dope and now finally i could get to spend money i, I probably don't have on things i don't need yeah but you know pretty cool shit to have i i didn't know any of this like I, I, I was aware of it because everyone always says those things like, well, who would win the Hulk versus and you're like, well, you know, damn well, he would beat the crap out of everyone has those. Those were the nerd arguments we had. Remember yeah. those days? I'll give you some of them and you tell me who you think win, uh, won. Who won? Jubilee versus Tim Drake, who was straight at the time and is in a relationship with Jubilee. Love spat. Uh, so Jubilee having powers, but imagine being trained by Batman. So I, I want to say Tim. Yeah, it's Tim. Yeah. Yeah. A male beat a female because this was the nineties when that was allowed. And yeah, <laughs> it's he, the nineties, baby. He takes his cape off and, uh, he puts it on something and she jumps on it thinking it's him. 
but it was just a distraction. He, he ties her up, and then she makes a bondage joke about Giggity. making tight. Yeah, I know. Oh, the nineties. Oh, the nineties. I was a kid. I didn't understand. I understand it now. I bet you there was a lot of ass that. shots. And- uh, Catwoman versus Electra. Mm. Thor versus Shazam. I go Electra on that one. Yep, you would be correct. Uh, and I want to s- fuck. I want to say Thor, but Shazam's got a little extra smoke. Thor. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thor won. Yeah. Namor versus Aquaman. Obviously, Aquaman won. <laughs> Actually, quick, I'm not sure. I actually think Namor might have won that. Now, I mean, full disc- uh, th- these were, I believe, based on fan write-in at the time of ultimately who won. But I think they're all pretty fair. I mean, Superman fought Hulk. It was Smart Hulk at the time. And uh, Mullet Superman was Smart Hulk. God, I hate up to, that like, The Superman. Grand Canyon. I know. That being said. Superman, like once he realizes that he could take a lot, he opens up and gives him the full heat vision treatment and just Hulk can't take it. I fully support you buying all of these so I can read them. Yeah. So here's the thing. You know that each of these omnibuses is going to be like 140. I'll chip in. Maybe wait. Maybe wait until they go on sale to like 80 each. And then, yes, I will be getting the omnibuses and you will be reading them. Oh. Thank God, because they just there's nothing good. There's nothing good in the future. So they go to the past. Speaking of nothing good in the future, these fuckers can't make a movie anymore without spending too much. And it's still not good. How do you no. spend so much money? And uh, we're not going to watch this whole thing. Just what we did. Drinker put out a whole thing. And this relates to later videos. But why are movies so expensive? And again, I, I do think of the clip from uh, <laughs> Independence Day, the dad. You don't actually think they spent twenty thousand dollars on a hammer, thirty thousand uh-huh. dollars on a toilet seat, do you? I love that man. If Godzilla minus one taught us anything, it's the Eastern filmmakers are probably going to end up doing to movies what manga is currently doing to the U.S. comic book industry. Killing it. Things that make even my most demanding sessions with Tatiana look like a playful cuddle and an early night in comparison. Partly this is because they haven't yet been infected by the postmodern nihilistic malaise that's slowly killing Hollywood, but mostly it's because they're able to produce big bombastic movies on par with anything we can make over here, only for a fraction of the price and it got me to thinking why what and that's what we'll talk about right now why well bloated budgets bloated budgets is one now this was explained to michael in the office with the lemonade stand analogy but let's just do it for you guys here if uh hollywood suits think it cost 100 million dollars to make a basic bitch movie and you can make it in under 15 million well, then the next time they will think it cost 15 million to make a basic bitch movie, even if it does, because the example, most people want to keep that hundred million. So what do you start doing? You start making up fucking reasons to keep that money. You start hiring people you don't need to hire like, oh, coof, desanitizing, social distancing people, intimacy coordinators, uh, uh, any number of HR people. You start making up positions to justify the spin intimacy coordinator you sign up to get hooked up with on set and a thing that used to be between the director and the two actors we now have dummies come in and try and intimacy coordinate between two actors which ultimately ends up still getting people fired see frank langella which we're actually will be talking about on a separate issue for a different thing oh it's synchronicities uh aside from bloat budget bloat it is the cgi problem which we have talked about multiple times that in itself is a multiple facet problem i mean Overloaded. we used to do we used to do solid work on special we effects to. we used to when we had one singular vision directed to one singular group and given time to work on it we now have multiple multiple groups instead of one single showrunner if they get one or director overloaded which is why the we've seen the decline across the board of cgis because they can't work and finalize on something if they have to change it seven goddamn times and do reshoots re- high thunderbolts five you months haven't of reshoots you haven't seen godzilla minus one right no i tried by the time okay. i went it was not in theaters we got to try to watch this together because I, I did miss that boat also but i did watch um sort of like a 
what's it what's it called a vignette mm-hmm. uh a montage they were, they were discussing just what you said they had a room full of people and the guy was rolling around on a chair just speaking to each person like okay yeah go ahead and and they cut out all these extra people which is what you're saying all the blow team was like under 35 people yeah made this and they movie. were just hammering shit out and it looks amazing not on set obviously but like in the production actual effect yeah no yeah looks amazing and from everything i've heard the story is amazing but the point is it could all be done but it's not because they have to justify all this bloat and you've seen their inclusion standards so they have to they have to it's 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 it be it has become a big business an industrial machine all of its own and apparently the only way now to do it and get around it is to is to straight up make indie movies Where's all the complaints about the diversity in this movie? You know, it's it's random. Wow. Where was the underrepresented? Oh, that's right. This wasn't an American production, so they didn't have to follow that bullshit. Oh, and there's been no shortage of bullshit. Uh, Gary and Drinker have been calling it out, and clearly Gary is going for that million subs because within days, sometimes the same day, here we have Marvel admits failure. The Marvels killed the MCU, and that's a good thing. I'm gonna watch the first couple minutes just because he has some glorious montages, and it leads quite well into. It's not exactly Marvel, but let's just say anything superhero on the Marvel side, Sony or otherwise, is not working out well for them. I'm wildly disappointed because I love the idea of four women leading a superhero film. Say MCU all you want. I don't give a shit. I hate the MCU slogan. I hate it. It's a different feel compared to what the other MCU stuff. As representing the decline of Marvel and the rise of the MCU. Now, I'm sure you've heard the term MCU. It's being used. I fucking hate that voice now. Communities. And yes, the term is extremely offensive. But it's also because I'm like no joke. I thought she was retarded. I thought she. Was, I thought she I had thought a bit. So, still might be coming. <laughs> undeniably true. Marvel is starting to focus on some of its stronger franchises going forward, but I'll leave it at that. I am Marvel Jesus. Nerdrotic.com. So shout out to Gary. He is at nine seventy five. He's. Crazy. Getting there. We were talking about exponential jumps. He's about to hit one. And he deserves it. He and Drinker are, of course, we always say they are the most palatable. They are the gateway drug of the fellowship in the 199. And they are normally, you know, uh, most people's first contact. And then yeah, they go deeper. Mine was Drinker. Yeah, there you go. There, uh, you know, and to any of you wondering how to get your friends and family into this. Cinema drinker video. They're older cinema drinker video. If they're, you know, 40 or younger, cinema Gary video. Yeah. Different deliveries, same message. Different deliveries, same message. Exactly. And that's the point. I don't care how you get the nutrients, but you need to take these vitamins. I don't, so I don't care how you cover it up. <laughs> cover it up with the flavor of drinker, with flavor of nerdrotic. And then you, when you really get it, you start mainlining it with nerd rage and uh, me every Friday and Saturday. You start you start watching the Badger and Badger cast, and then you're really in deep. But for now, these are the good ones. But yeah, Marvel is no surprise. They, they, they're this is the review of all their movies so far. Zero point zero. <laughs> That's certainly my reaction to hearing Irwin talk about uh, Madam Web. I think Madam Web has actually broke me, and I haven't even seen it. Question. Totally side side note, you pay attention to the numbers on your page, your channel <clears throat> at, at 30 minutes now. How many people do you think are still listening? I mean, I know at least three or four that are listening still okay, cool. for some I'll, reason. <clears throat> I will throw this ad in then. We are planning, correct me if I'm wrong, to do the next episode of this show as a live stream. That's true. That's true. The 10th episode will be live streamed with special guest star Nerd Wars. Yeah. So I figured tell somebody now and let them tell a couple people. And of course, I'll spread it across Instagram to the almost yeah. 500 people. Hey, Creativity's uh, Avenger. Tomorrow, when you're on the Nerd Rage stream with us, you can say it, even though I was going to say it because 
That's pretty much the only reach he has. But hey, thank you for still listening. Creativity is Avenger. Maybe Ali and then like my parents. I think that's the only people that list past 30 minutes. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments if you've listened longer than 30 minutes. I would actually be impressed. I throw a code word in the yeah. comments. What do you want? Code word 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Speaking of code word. Where my money? I have a Aww. code word. Pay me now. Diddy Mao. Pay me, you pay. Amazon has been sued, and I am a part of this. But I've discovered because yes, I did pay it a year in advance. Amazon sued over Prime Video ads. Class action complaint accuses tech giant of immoral, unethical, oppressive. Un it's immoral. It's unethical. It's a preface. It's unscrupulous conduct. Jackie Child. Um, and this is done in California and Washington, who have different standards than the rest of the country for whatever reason. I prefer one standard, but we're going with the different ones. As long as it gets me the money. Long short of this is people paid a year in advance for no ads. And halfway through their payment fiscal year, they introduced ads without uh, adequately adjusting. So if they were going to do this month to month, it's fine. They can tell you next month. That's fine. But for the year, they should have automatically bumped them to that and just taken the hit. It didn't. Yeah, like like being grandfathered, you know, they'd be like, hey, we're going to give you the rest of your time, but then, or at least specify at a certain date, you're losing it. We see for years, people purchased and renewed their Amazon Prime subscriptions, believing that they would include ad free streaming, the lawsuit says. But last Monday, Amazon changed the deal to stream movies and TV shows without ads. Amazon customers must now pay an additional $2.99 per month. This is not fair because these subscribers already paid for the ad free version. These subscribers should not have to pay an additional $2.99 a month for something they already paid for. And I would love to see how these motherfuckers squirm out of it. I'm sure they will. I just would love to see how they do <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Amazon responded, uh, pray I don't alter the agreement further. Oh, and speaking of something that they better pray is not altered further. If this score gets any lower. No. Oh. It's mean, been this... called the worst. I... Yeah. Yeah. Although, oh, who was it? I think it was Gary who said Argyle was worse than this. Yeah, but I think uh, I think the one I was mentioning, it wasn't the worst Marvel movie. I think it was the worst like Sony Marvel film. I I also thought that this ranks below a lot of the MC. Like you know, Thor: The Dark World, I believe, is better than this. At least I've certain Tomatoes, it's certainly one of the lowest. Audience score, it's at the fifty-three. That's going down. Yeah, look. Irwin's review definitely made me not want to watch this. I barely got through Gary's review, and that was with the humor of him and Perry Chan. Uh, it, this is just a bad movie, and they're not in the super suits. Uh, if you watch the trailer, that's the amount of time they're in the super suits. Connection to Peter Parker is so dirt thin that Nerd Wars didn't even realize that that was Ben Parker in the fucking movie till I told him during his review. So, what the hell does that tell you about the movie? I don't that he doesn't pay attention. Uh, maybe, or maybe <laughs> the fact that they didn't have the rights and they never directly called him Ben and Parker yeah. in the same no, fucking sentence. It was supposed to be very low, like under the carpet kind of thing. Well, the only under the carpet I would like to see is with these four, and oh. you didn't get any of that. Uh, so go watch Euphoria, I guess, or fucking White no, Lotus. Don't or do that. Any yeah. of the things instead of this. You can but do that. I, I don't even want to watch this for the memes. What is that? I don't even want to watch it for the memes. Don't even know what that means anymore. Yeah, but you know what? Something I will watch just because I like to support the guy. What do we Hail. think? Suits LA cast Stephen Amell to lead the NBC drama. Of course, Stephen is the goaded arrow, at least the first three seasons. He went on to do Heels, which I liked what I saw, even though I don't really give a shit about professional wrestling. Uh, what? what, 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 what? What are we thinking about this? Did you watch Suits? Okay, quick rant. Love Stephen Amell. Turned me on to Green Arrow. Made a whole thing out of it. I, I went full DC after that show. I mean, I I've love... I've contained my rage for as long as possible, but I shall unleash my fury upon you. Now you may rant. <laughs> the, the show was good with him. Uh, once he left, I mean, everything was already going downhill on the CW anyway. Uh, Suits is a good show I understand I've seen clips because my daughter binged it I know you're what First season into it 
Stephen Amell is to the CW as Robert Downey Jr. was to the MCU. Yeah. When he left, it was fucking over. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. Very and good. Uh, yeah, I forget what I've seen of what of uh, suits you're talking about. Yeah. I watched the first episode until Meghan Markle showed up and I stopped uh, watching. Well, it's supposed to be very good. I get the idea. Yeah, I, it looked very entertaining. This is supposed in the to be 60 the same. second clips. Yeah. It's like what they did with like NCSI and all the other shows that they've got, uh, you know, one on each coast. Yeah. And we see here it says Suits LA centers on Ted Black, played by Stephen Amell, a formal, f- a former, a f- I like, I always say a former. He's going to be wearing a suit and t- or a, a, a tux the whole time. A mm-hmm. former federal prosecutor from New York who has reinvented himself, representing the most powerful clients in Los Angeles. His firm is at a crisis point. And in order to survive, he must embrace a role he held in contempt his entire career. So he's probably going to be the boss, and he fucking hates authority figures, so... That'll work. Yeah. Ted is surrounded by a group of characters who test their loyalties to both Ted and each other while learning valuable social lessons. No, I'm just kidding. He doesn't say that, but that's probably what'll happen. I mean, can't help but mix their personal and professional lives. Heels was good, and I don't like wrestling. But it was like the behind the scenes shit. You 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 care about the characters and you know stuff like that. Yeah, if you've got a good actor, you can make people care about shit that is you otherwise would not. It was a good cast all the way around. It wasn't that it was just him, but he was the boss. He did run the show kind of thing. I'm excited. I'll check it out. And if it's if it's good, I'll I'll go over and watch the original suits. It's done by the same guy, right? Uh, it it is. I I I'm not going to make that promise. If it's, if it's good, then I'll be happy. It's good, but I'm not going to fucking watch it on NBC and I'm not going to retroactively go back and watch seven or eight seasons or whatever it is. Yeah. I'll just keep watching Seinfeld again Uh, for the 20,000th time. Something I will not watch 20,000 times. I do not think unless it's amazing. I mean, confirmation that we didn't lie to anyone last month when we said it would be set in the sixties and these would be your actors because here it be here. it be right here. Right here, you know that was that shit was hilarious. By the way, uh, I I just noticed for the first time that they put Ben's picture above him because you otherwise, yeah, yeah. I've seen this a dozen times, and I just noticed that. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of things going on with this, but the main thing, and if you look online, the largest contention point is this guy right here, Pedro. He looks a little. A little Electra. Feige, little little Kevin Feige. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, Ben looks cool. Ben looks like Ben Grimm. Yeah. And uh, I have no problem with Joseph Quinn. He looks just like Johnny. Look, he's got the blonde hair and everything. Maybe bulked up a little bit because his arms look like he got some bicep. He looks bigger than Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic doesn't look that fantastic with his little fucking sweater. I do want to say that I don't think Joseph actually looks like him. Everyone else looks on point. I mean, what the fuck does Johnny Storm look like? No, it's like a white blonde guy. No, he, no, 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 no. The put, faces, put fire on him. The faces of these characters uh-huh. look like the actors. Very good. Uh, they, he, you know what? I now realized because I was looking through several pictures. He's been done dirty in a lot of his. This is what Joseph Quinn looks like. I'm saying you've seen you've seen the horrible they hit him with the, the hair. Horrible versions. And, yeah, no, yeah. and that's why a lot of people are like, "Oh, fucking Eddie is like." Well, first of all, can we stop putting him in a box? The character, yeah. I'm sure he can do other things. Sure, he can work, but also the face. Yeah, no, I saw a couple of them. You know, no homo. He's an attractive, dude. He can pull it off. Yeah, maybe slightly homo. I'm all right. We're in California. We're into that sort of thing. Not Just, that there's you know, anything wrong with that. No, there's anything unless you go after kids, and there's something wrong with it. Something you always got to go there. You always got to take it to a dark place. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that's where it is. You got to shine a light on it. Speaking of shining a light on it, they're doing a live action reboot. It is officially going. They're doing the Masters of the Universe unrelated to Netflix and Kevin Smith. This is really just an excuse to watch the greatest monologue from Frank Langella, as we mentioned earlier. Call back in the original Masters. And uh, I know I got a little trouble with. uh, uh, Dr. Showtime when he thought that I said that it's this movie that's so bad it's good. Well, I did say that. It's a common phrase. What I'm saying is by any metric or standard, this is a cheesy 80s movie that is right. bad, but it is good. It's got yes. some great performances from uh uh what's your name? Cox, 
<laughs> she, she goes on to be in Friends. She plays the, the girl. Oh, what's her name? The sister. This is where David Schwimmer's sister in uh, Courtney Cox. Cor Courtney Cox. Thank you. Jesus Christ. I got yeah. you. Courtney Cox and the dude that plays Tom Paris in uh, Star Trek Voyager is in this. There's a bunch. Mr. Radchek from uh, Back to the Future plays the cop. They all have different names, obviously, but bear with me. Let's watch. This is Frank Langella's Skeletor doing what Kevin Smith wishes he could do is make a badass villain that people give a shit about. And I, I like to imagine that after this scene played, everyone started clapping uh, on set for what they witnessed. People of Eternia. I stand before the great eye of the galaxy, chosen by destiny to receive the powers of Grayskull. This inevitable moment will transpire before your eyes, even as He-Man himself bears witness to it. Can you talk about that makeup? Now, I, Skeletor, am master of the universe. I am non-binary. Don't you do it. Oh, practical effects. Here. 16 million. This only CGI. This was animated. Here we go. What kind of work can be done over the weekend? Yes. I feel the universe within me. I am, I am a part of the cosmos. Its energy flows, flows through me. Of what consequence are you now? This planet, these people, they are nothing to me. The universe is power. You, unstoppable power. And I am that force! I am that power! Kneel before your master! Soon, you are no longer my equal! I am more than man! More than life! I am... God! That's what Gary's gonna do when he hits a million subscribers. There's Dan Vask right there. Uh. Now we gotta clip everybody's face. Yeah. What's this we, Negro? You have to clip everyone's face. Dude, that monologue. It was a, you, you, you standing around screaming, so holding the joint while all your friends are like, can you, you shut think up? I haven't screamed this monologue in the shower. Yeah. My God, go watch, go go watch Masters of the Universe, the eighty seven. He movie. said, it's "Pretty damn good." Nerd Wars. It's pretty damn good. Yeah, I give up. Speaking of, speaking of Nerd Wars, did a little birthday stream. Did a little birthday stream. We got a vision of things to come. His power went out, and I had a sink or swim moment that I've seen repeated many times in other channels where the host disappears and the guests go oh fuck in this case i was a co-host but still but imagine Someone if you were not there. prepared yeah oh well he certainly wouldn't be getting his catwoman statue let's see let's just watch a couple minutes to see what what happened we were he's giving his uh his very drunken horchata rum review of madam web dirty good girl my girl sydney sweeney my future ex-wife she's all telling her backstory which is actually pretty good and then well, i would say was anyone likable she was likable frozen oh. oh so i go oh oh yeah, we were in the chat lighting it up did you freeze uh-huh it was at that moment he froze for now so till he comes back we're gonna shill a little bit let's get him his cat woman's very statue. happy that we got him his cat oh, woman's poor buddy look at that frozen on his birthday look at you Poor Jack. buddy, and then you throw over. his body I'm, I'm overboard. It's just maybe he's <laughs> he better use this now while he resets his camera to go get another drink. Chad is takeover. Yeah, and we I just thankfully, ran, I mean, let's see. I thankfully did not watch Madam Freaking Catwoman. Alex Darby. There it is. That's so he waited until he left. 
hundred dollars. Don't want to do it to myself where I pause myself on a stupid face. Alex Darby gave him the fucking hundred dollars when he left. Yep. But he got his cat women statue. And uh, we did. Uh, we had a lot of fun with the chat. Uh, people were uh, we were talking about movies. Of course, there he is. Look at these weird people. Uh, it was a very nice experience. And, uh, you know. Maybe a sign of uh, in the future of something the channel might do. Maybe, oh, on a Badger, Badger Cast live channel, say maybe every Wednesday for an hour or two in the evenings. We'll see. We'll see. Could happen. Could happen. Got to get through certain things first. Like, we got to get through this fucking remake. This I'm remake. dreading it. But at the might same actually, time, yeah, I say the, the video we make about this might make or break both of us. I, I want to do more. So, yeah, we need to hurry up. Like, I was almost going to ask you to do one base. Sorry, we're discussing doing a, 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 a comparison uh, to the original. And I kind of want Badger to do one now for the original, having not seen. So I'd like getting his actual review for the original first. Yeah, I might it's do tainted. I might do a little something just to show what I hope the best moments and things are that they carry over. This isn't necessarily about how they're going to adapt it, though. This is covering the controversy that it's Pain. not coming out to theaters. All right. But what you will discover is when you read through this, which I know yeah, think we don't, what you will see here is that they had the chance to have a theatrical release. But nay, sir. Not naysayer, naysayer. They took monies equaling to 60 million. No, here we go. They could make, they had a choice. Make the film for $60 million and get a theatrical release. Or take 85 million and go streaming only. And they opted for the lata. So what are we complaining about? Well, what we're complaining about is after that decision was made, Joel Silver was essentially me tooed out. But because he had clout, he was able to get a substantial payment before leaving. And because this is, of course, my opinion, because he got that substantial uh, payment, Donnie Lyman over here wanted money too. But since he already took the money, now he's gone scorched earth and is saying, oh, this deserved a theatrical. You were fine with it while you were getting paid. But now that the other guy got paid more, now all of a sudden you have a fucking problem. I gotcha. It. Yeah. So if they had paid him a parting gift too, the way they did to Silver, he probably would not be saying anything about whether or not it should be streaming or not. Again, that is my supposition, blah, blah, blah. It's my opinion. It's my opinion. You can't sue me because it's an opinion. Not, I'm not stating his fact. You know, it's funny. I just told my daughter today at the store, I absolutely hate hearing a child say to their parent, that's not fair. Who the fuck yeah. said this world is fair? I mean, got to get paid because someone else did, right? Speaking of trying to get paid on the eventual monetization of the channel, destruction like this, which I'm legit tired of seeing. I feel like we're in a fucking time machine. Here we are yet again with a willful destruction of a beloved property. They know exactly the response that's going. I tell, I've, I've, I've said it behind the scenes, and I will now say it here. I'm going to say it tomorrow. This is She-Hulk 2.0. They know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly the response they're going to get. They've done everything on purpose from shrinking rogues, tits and ass, to binary morph, non-binary morph. It, it, they know exactly what they She you know what they're doing even, with them little ass shorts? You didn't even mention the shitty attempt to recreate, if you will, the animation. Flat and lifeless, just like Rogue's tits and oh. What men only want one thing. Next Saturday morning, check your local listings. I'm grateful to have the this shit was sad, to dude. Goodbye. I am proud of you all. I oh look, look at that man. The white guy. Yeah. Fate lies in our hands now. Yeah. Now. Now. A lot changed for him over that summer. What am I jangling? We have to stay vigilant. The professor entrusted us oh, with Daily his dream. Oh, Daily Bugle. Ah, didn't notice that before. No matter how dark it is. There's no comfort for Spider-Man the animated series after they're done with fucking this up. We believe in each other. Thank you. 
We get huh. this done by SJW uh, SJW haircut. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Before we get to it, uh, the Wolverine scooter scene is he is Gambit charging Wolverine's claws. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Because the super sharp equivalent of lightsaber metal that cuts yeah. through anything and is indestructible. So, so they were doing like a, a team up of attack. Boom, boom, multiplayer explosion damage. Um, the key thing to notice in here, because let's let's get it straight. Don't get it twisted, my dogs. This is a continuation, not a reimagining. So this is essentially the next season that would have happened. As we just saw Morph on his off hours and like right here would have been a fucking white guy with black hair. But now they've got him the changeling all white because now he's a nondescript fucking non-binary Ken doll or whatever all the time. And you know that what that really means is going to act super effeminate and like wafy, even though he's supposed to be non-binary. And then yes, obviously they gave, they gave storm the Mohawk from the eighties, but it's not the eighties. And now this fucking haircut signifies a different thing how come bishop got to be in the back they're working together as a team jeez bub keep buzzing in my ear and i hate that voice i hate it i absolutely hate that voice i don't i get that when steve bloom is dead or they couldn't get him whatever you, you couldn't get anyone else to fucking come here bub. anything anything other than this dude And yeah, so Jean Grey is pregnant. You think they're going to do a little who's the father? Or is it 100% going to be Scott? Well, I want to know is, will they assign gender when the baby's born? Or they got to wait a little while? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I I just saw it. What happened? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Fuck. Oh no! What what happened? What? Ha- oh no! How terrible! That's just that's just awful! How terrible! Oh no! But but seriously though, what happened? That's why would you do this? Yeah. Why would you do this? Yeah. It's- <laughs> to me, my X Men. Now that's the thing. Okay, that was badass. But look at oh, look only in the top left. Look only in the top left of when they land. That pose right there is zesty the, the AF pose? my nega band. Sure, I see what you're saying, and yeah. now I'm Everything not going to be fine. able to unsee it. Yeah. Magneto, the last will and testament of Charles Xavier. Everything he built, luxurious hair. now belongs Eyeliner. to me. You know, Drinker said that Charmaine obeyed Chinoy was going to launch a thousand channels, and I thought he was right at the time. But respectfully, don't nobody give, give a shit about that now. This destruction will launch a thousand YouTube channels. People will make their their they will get off the ground with this fucking show. Hundred percent. This is this. It's different in the sense of like, you know, it's hard to defend a cartoon or a comic book, but at the same time, if you were being molded, right, like your brain at that age, and you see some shit, and it it affects you one way or the other. And then to see someone just absolutely drag it through the mud years later, it sucks. I'm looking at you, Avatar, next week. Oh, that's going to be fun. Well, speaking of backlash, and I, which you got me rethinking it because you yourself say you don't see it in him. Or at least you meant in that artwork. It didn't look like him. No, it was that artwork. Um, I think the point is this is uh, originally the, the only one I ever saw say anything in a public fashion is this Daniel Reitman, who, of course, we reference all the time. He's a leaker. Uh, every the vast, vast, vast majority, like to a scale of like uh, uh, nine to one, whatever has all been against Pedro to the point where I'm seeing articles now and stories like, why is everyone suddenly against Pedro? Yeah. 
And I'm simply suggesting that I think a lot of this backlash is actually two or three people that are they're now pushing it to take away from the real backlash, which is Pedro and his the fucking little darling child of Hollywood, which is why he's in everything. Everything. And um, if you're wondering, if you're wondering how they got away with this, because even Ripper was like, I was wrong. They were never going to cast four white people. Guess what? They didn't. Because Ebon Moss Baccarat is considered a person of color. Right. Even though we saw Jewish as white people, they can still finagle it. Pedro is considered an underrepresented group because Pedro, yeah, two whitey stooms, uh, Sue and, Sue and uh, Johnny Storm, but there's two underrepresented groups right there. We don't know who they're going to get for the villain. I guarantee you it's Brown, and I'm hearing people say it's Javier Bardem, who we just saw in Dune. Be cool. Yeah, but that's also their three out of five underrepresented groups in main on-screen representation that they know we know they have to. That's the great thing. We caught you now. You have to. We know you have to. So where are you going to put it? We, we know bingo. you have to do it. We need three out of five. Who, yeah. who are it going to be? Uh, that's they're gonna the have an, They're going to have an adopted black female oh, daughter. Oh, yeah. Wait to the supporting cast. Wait till we get who vo vo uh, uh, voices the little Kirby robot or whatever the hell it is. Oh, yeah. I, when we tell you down to the fucking catering, there needs to be so many uh, which and uh, what underrepresented groups means black people or Mexicans. And at least in Hollywood, that's what that means. <clears throat> Every time without fail. It's great. It's great. No, because we got them now. We got them now. And wait. If Can any of these road? court cases, if any of these court cases go through to discovery and we start seeing the emails, brother, 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 Talk about things that will start a thousand channels. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to talk about. Uh, when seeing them talking about this, of course, one of the only good Superman products. Don't worry, we're coming in for a soft landing here. We're almost at the end of the show. Superman and say, Lois. This is what I'm caught up to on shorts. season four. Yeah, I, I just finished season three. The very I realized I was halfway through the last episode. It was right him fighting Bizar Bizarro, which turned into a doomsday. They're going to get a, this is basically, they're going to get a last season. It's going to be worth the wait. And um, God bless, because when James Gunn took over, didn't think they were going to get to say goodbye. Thought it was going to be a get out. Don't let the door hit you. But they did well enough. And look, this is also subject to all those inclusion standards. You can see it very plainly, but they did it better than most. And they preserve the family unit. And as I said in my review, you should be so lucky as to have a mom and a father. Well, you should be so lucky to have a mom and a father, but to have a mom and a father as portrayed by Superman and uh, Bitsy, Bitsy Tulloch. They are really good parents. Kids are little shits, but they're really good. Yeah, uh, well, you just lost yeah, some you never more know. fans. You never know. Yeah, well, that's all right. We know how to weed them out. <laughs> uh, speaking of weeding them out, uh. Marvel Studios developing a Midnight Suns crossover movie, which I do not think they would be allowed to make and or call Midnight Sun. Midnight Daughters. Yeah, or, or, well, that's the thing. As Looking this up, there are women on the team, including Elsa Bloodstone and Wonder, but they still call it Suns and not Suns like they did. Yeah, because the it game. came from a time when nobody was offended by it. Right. Uh, or at least those that were didn't. That looks dope. <laughs> Sorry. I'm over here looking on Entertainment Earth. I want this classic Batman. Uh, maybe just open that link for later. In the meantime, real quickly, this Midnight Suns, if they do it, it would be great. Of course, uh, Moon Knight only got seven minutes of his own show and Ghost Rider, they can't decide. Man Thing, which apparently was good in uh, Werewolf by Night, but I didn't watch Werewolf by Night. It was good. I liked it. Yeah. The point is, like all things, this would be cool. They, they're thinking about doing it, but if they do it, just know it'll probably be nothing like what you're expecting. It won't be gritty or R-rated or have these four men, or if they do, they'll be bossed around by five other women or six other women. Oh, it'll my God. Thing. Okay, so. and so if they do Johnny, who, which version? Are we getting the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Version. It'll be the Robbie Reyes. It'll be the the representation version, or it'll be a new yeah. one that'll be black. That'll for whatever reason. It's just a skull on fire. What does it matter what color they are? Well, what does matter is we have by no means one. We said it on uh, 
Nerd Rage today. Uh, if you're not watching that on Nerd Wars, make sure to watch that every Friday. Friday. Damn it, Friday. Tell me what that's from. Uh, every Friday, 12 a.m. Pacific, we are on Nerd, War or Nerd Wars, Nerd Rage show. And we talked, this is not, this is basically the first small little skirmish that we saw some blood. Saw some blood in the water. But the battle against Disney and all these demons, here we have uh, an actual factual lawsuit in federal court stating all the things we have covered on the channel and film threat has covered and elon musk has shared and leaked and all these people all these inclusion standards that we just were referencing of here you see on-screen representation at least three out of five blah 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 which you can say this all you want but to make this sort of equity happen happen to have this sort of literal artificial balance of races you you can't do this without discrimination and that is what this lawsuit covers that essentially white straight men i hear them crying now oh poor straight straight white men yes yes i mean poor at people this point yeah have their lives ruined because they're straight and white <clears throat> and men this is separate from the was it like nine thousand women yeah. lawsuit? This is another one, and that was pay disparity you, among multiple different companies and subsidiaries of Disney. And then you got Gina Carano suing them. That that is specifically the because people point out that California is an at will state. That is specifically uh, highlighting the differences between how Disney treats their male employees and their female employees, which also would reference the nine thousand women yeah. paid disparity. You know what's great is when you cover this, you sort of do get educated. I'm shocked at my level of retention of these goddamn lawsuits. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Your weaponized yeah. autism at work. Weaponized autism. Finally, I'm remembering things that that help me in my life. Um, the, the the end result of this is I don't know any parent that wants to raise their child to go out into the world and then instead of being judged on their child's actual merits, they're judged based on their skin color or their sex, either yeah. gender or ality. You walk in and instead of handing a resume, you hand them your checklist that has yeah. the punches hold up, the holes punched out. So, and this specifically is charging them in a federal court, federal civil rights complaint against the Walt Disney Company and its subsidiaries for violating Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 by engaging in illegal race, sex, and national origin discrimination which as we have seen here is plainly laid out plainly laid out which is why i say process of, of discovery when a lawsuit happens once it is confirmed that this is indeed a lawsuit worth going through they enter something called discovery wherein both sides plain and defendant have to exchange information when this happens and they have to open up their email chains to see who was saying what to whom Oh boy. <laughs> oh, but when we find out, and because this is rumored and probably going to be confirmed very soon, that Leslie Headland was one of the people that was going to be on the Zoom call with Gina Carano to shame her in her struggle session, that she was one of the people shame. behind it and going to be on it. I can't wait to see that email chain. But that will be in the future. Everything will be in the future. Little, little esotericness there be somebody's ass <sighs> that's it we're done it's yeah. over now granted this is only the ninth show I those are rookie numbers in this racket but we got to get way more than that but we will next week as we've said 10th episode which for anyone to do a 10th podcast apparently it's a lot more rare than you think so we will be live We'll be live and in person to no one, probably, even though we will be heavily marketing. So I please tell all your friends, <laughs> <laughs> 9 a.m. PST. Next Friday, we'll be joined by Erwin from Nerd Wars and uh, hopefully all the good ones from the 199 in the fellowship. Mr. Rat. Detective I might Rat. even I might even asshole up and turn my camera on that day. I mean, let's not scare people away on the 10th one, but we can tease it. Yeah, I don't know. We can tease if, it. If, if they show up, I'll show up. I will ask you probably for once to weaponize the Instagram audience and post over there that yeah. live streams will happen. Live streams will happen. If they don't, if, it, if they don't want to show up, shame on them. But other than that, that's it. Yeah. We've done it. I guess. Hey, wait, wait. Bass Reeves. 
quick honorable mention since we both started watching it. It's good. Did you did you finish it? Or are you still going no. through? No, no, I'm like four episodes in. Yeah, I knew because once I beginning. realized it was a good meal, I stopped eating it because I was uh -huh. like, oh. No, I need. I have too much trash that when I need, I have, I have to go back to that them. steak every once in a while and eat it. Yeah, very good. Well, I'm realizing now I should probably make an outro video, but we'll see. I'll probably have that in time for the next one. But in the meantime, well, bye.